Tumblr is now completely dead, with the site's value going from a billion dollars down to measly three million dollars. And by looking at Tumblr's search volume, it's not hard to see why. From 2012 to 2015, Tumblr was one of the most searched for websites in the world. It was unstoppable, but now today, Tumblr is dead in the water. So what happened to Tumblr? Why didn't it grow like Reddit, Twitter, or Instagram? Well, there's several reasons for it. The first reason being the site's user base. And at the start, this was actually a good thing for the site. They capitalized on this, as this was the core premise of Tumblr, a place for every niche under the sun to come together and celebrate their passions. Founded back in 2007, Tumblr was a smash hit straight out of the gate. During the website's first two weeks after its launch, 75,000 users had already become active on the platform. It wouldn't take long for Tumblr to establish itself as one of the giants of social media, because back then there were barely any other sites competing. They were quick to dominate the internet back in the late 2000s. But aside from little competition, another large part of Tumblr's success can be attributed to the platform's straightforward layout and design. Additionally, the website's focus on blogging made it excellent for bringing users together through a variety of different hobbies. Tumblr had its own specific communities and content sections that were similar to Reddit, but users could also re-blog each other's posts like on Twitter. It was a decent site back in the early days, which might be why some people are nostalgic towards how Tumblr was back in these golden days. I mean, a recent article from The Atlantic summarized the website in its prime as, quote, not just a blogging platform, but a staging ground for an array of political movements, the birthplace of all manner of digital aesthetics, and the site of free key in-groups. The site's users love Tumblr's wide variety of available content, and at the website's peak, there were over 100 million posts per day. Back then, Tumblr was home to a plethora of talented artists and content creators. However, in a few short years, nearly all of these creators would be gone, and the site would be completely dead. So why was this the case? And how could a website with so much influence and such a huge user base implode so quickly? You see, during Tumblr's prime, Tumblr was filled with countless subcultures, all with varying levels of depravity and vocality. You see, Tumblr was different to Reddit. This was a place for the artsy hipster crowd. In fact, this was really for anything you could name. Tumblr was home to hipsters, bronies, furries, feminists, and so many more on the website. And whilst this was great for Tumblr's initial growth, this would also be one of the main reasons for Tumblr's downfall. And this became apparent in 2014. Around this time, there had never really been many online gatherings, especially not on Tumblr. So what would it look like if these social rejects attempted hosting their own real-life event? Well, that question got an answer during the infamous 2014 convention organized by Tumblr's very own users. And it was this event that would mark the decline of Tumblr's entire website. Now to give some context, a community on Tumblr had just announced this thing called Dashcon. Dashcon was a convention advertised as being run by Tumblr fans for Tumblr fans, touting that the event would be the largest gathering of Tumblr users to date. And at the time, this seemed like a perfect opportunity for people to socialize with their friends and communities, which was then egged on by Dashcon's organizers, who promised the world to their attendees. Fandom panels, literature readings, podcasters, a live band, and a massive ball pit were all to be expected during the convention weekend. However, once the event rolled around, Dashcon's organizers and the attendees would be thoroughly slapped with a dose of reality. This was going to be historic. Tumblr was organizing this huge event, and it was supposed to be a great PR move for Tumblr. In fact, around 5,000 people were expected to show. But when the event actually came to fruition, only a little under 300 ended up actually making the nearly empty hotel. Furthermore, an anticipated podcast group, as well as the live band, actually cancelled their book well before Dashcon started, which was a snub to attendees who bought VIP tickets in hopes of seeing them. So what was their compensation for this misfortune? A free extra hour in the so-called massive ball pit, which turned out to be just an inflatable swimming pool filled with plastic balls in the middle of an empty lounge. Even worse for the event organizers, the contrast in expected to actual arrivals was starting to cause big problems. You see, they were planning on making over $17,000 in door sales, and most of that money was supposed to be paid for hotel managers so that Dashcon would be kept afloat. Unfortunately, this $17,000 was money they didn't actually have. Because of the organizer's inaccurate foresight, every Dashcon attendee was called into a single room and asked to donate so that the event could continue. And shockingly, they actually managed to muster up enough funding, although the majority of it was done through online transactions. However, there was a catch. Using the maths done in Internet Historian's video on Dashcon, it turns out that these event hosts actually scanned their attendees. The organizers requested far more money than they actually needed, and then pocketed around $9,000 in door sale revenue and donations for themselves. And to put the final cherry on top of this clown 
Fiesta was that the official artwork for Dashcon ended up being stolen copyright material. This Dashcon situation would end up irreversibly damaging Tumblr's reputation. This was the first major crack in Tumblr's public image. This was one of the first signs that Tumblr was going to collapse. Even though the event wasn't officially licensed, the whole ordeal showcased how out of touch with reality a lot of Tumblr's user base really were. The event was then further put in the limelight after internet historians run down on Dashcon, which received over 17 million views. Yet even still, Dashcon wouldn't be the last time that Tumblr's more questionable and radical users started gaining notoriety across the internet. It was a year later in 2015, when Tumblr's empire would begin to collapse. You see, in late 2015, another big controversy was coming around the corner to taint Tumblr's legacy, and this controversy was around the incredibly vocal Steven Universe fandom. It all started when an artist going by the username Sammy070 uploaded a series of innocuous artworks depicting certain characters from the cartoon, packing simply just a few less pounds than they actually did in the real show. Now, the Steven Universe didn't like this. Despite the fact that this fandom is clearly focused on areas like inclusivity and tolerance, this artwork was definitely not taken lightly. And what followed after Zami posted her artwork was a relentless campaign of vitriol and threats from her fellow Tumblr users. And this is to put it lightly, because Zami actually received so many hate messages that she stated she was going to sleep forever, and apparently got close enough that she ended up in the hospital. And even after this information went public, some members of the Steven Universe fandom still continued their assault. Tons and tons of users kept up their stream of death threats towards Zami, while accusing her of lying about her suicide attempt and mental well-being. The Tumblr hive mind had decided that Zami's depictions of the cartoon characters went against the Steven Universe's message of inclusivity. Yet ironically, their response was to violently exclude and harass an artist for drawing something they didn't like. But this controversy served to highlight that Tumblr's entire community was now rotting to the core. As in the months after this, Tumblr's group Think Effect was working in overdrive, and controversies like these began to reveal a much darker side to Tumblr. Because on the one hand, Tumblr was supposedly welcoming. However niche your interests were, there was probably a community on Tumblr for it. But for all the relatively sensible communities, there were just as many echo chambers. Nonsensical, ludicrous points of view started becoming the norm on Tumblr, and anything outside of the narrow scope was declared wrong thing. And this mentality wouldn't only be limited to fandoms active on Tumblr either, as a singular ideological narrative would soon end up engulfing the entire platform, which is about when Tumblr's downfall was done to become very noticeable. For the first time in the website's history, their user base began to decline. Alienated by the growing fanaticism and hysteria on the site, many users were starting to pack up and leave in droves. From 2014 to 2016, the amount of posts per day would dramatically fall by over 50%. But it wasn't only the website's crazed fandoms behind the sharp decline. A few other factors were at play as well, because many insane Tumblr posts began inexplicably going viral, like one user's hot take regarding the bigotry behind dental hygiene. And more posts like these certainly weren't the norm by any means. The general sentiment gave rise to a new archetype infamously coined the social justice warrior. Someone who is unconcerned with real issues in society and instead getting angry or harmless content on the internet. A person who spots misogyny, racism, prejudice where it doesn't actually exist. This term was what many perceived Tumblr users as, which was a general sentiment that would only speed up the website's eventual downfall. But before I continue, I want to shout out today's sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to lairds, lords, or ladies. What Established Titles does is give you one square foot of land so you can call yourself a lord or a lady and provide you an official certificate with a crest. Once you have your certificate, you will have a unique plot number to see the exact location of your land. By owning this land, Established Titles allows you to change your name to lord or lady on credit cards, plane tickets, even dating profiles, and so much more. And even better is that Established Titles Titles plant a tree with every order, and works with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support reforestation efforts. And right now, Established Titles told me that the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot, just within a few minutes of walking distance. And so depending on how many of you want to become a lord or a lady, we can build our own little moon kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift, and Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. Plus, if you use code MOON, you'll get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com forward slash moon to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Now back to the video. Another reason for Tumblr's demise later came from a similar place. Because of the site's focus on niche interests, Tumblr quickly became populated with a relatively young audience, comprised of people who really just didn't fit into the mainstream platforms. And while it was nice that Tumblr gave these misfits a place to exist, this also caused some less than ideal side effects for the website. One of these problems was that Tumblr's community was facilitating user partisanship on one side of the political spectrum, and these people certainly didn't like being questioned. Additionally, because of the echo chamber effects of social media, this community 
community would continue growing and became increasingly notorious around the internet, being proliferated with posts such as the misogyny of bacon versus pumpkin sauce, reflecting how extreme Tumblr's uses were going. And soon enough, the website's one-sided political ideology was the first thing that came to people's minds when they heard the word Tumblr, becoming pretty much synonymous with the website as a whole. This and all the other culminating public disasters for Tumblr ended up irreversibly damaging the website's ability to attract new users, specifically users who were closer to the middle or right side of the political spectrum, as Tumblr was starting to get filled with non-stop discussion of identity politics. For a user base apparently having the goal of promoting inclusivity, they didn't do a whole lot of practicing what they preached. If you had the audacity to be a stray white male who posted on Tumblr, obviously any statements you made would be completely disregarded because of this. And then on top of this was their absurd focus and hypersensitivity on supposed self-identity, something that Tumblr would take to a whole new level. The ridiculous lengths that Tumblr users took regarding self-identification would become such a phenomenon that entire communities on various platforms would become dedicated to making fun of them. A subreddit called Tumblr in Action would gain over 120,000 subscribers during its lifetime on Reddit. Despite the name, many of the posts on the subreddit weren't actually from Tumblr, instead they were from sites like Twitter or other sites with similar ideologies. But this only served to prove how synonymous Tumblr had become with the idea of quote SJWs, repeating this bland monotonous narrative. And then the Tumblr in Action subreddit took on a life of its own, with even PewDiePie making a video on it. <laughs> try to make, try to write a joke that won't offend anyone on Tumblr. This is the worst point I have ever seen. If you have trouble making jokes that are racist, and without misogynistic, then you are funny, actually. As you'd expect, a lot of the political focus on Tumblr was based around gender, race, and any other label they could use. One group of Tumblr users took this notion of labels even further on a community known as Other Kin. These individuals self-identified as ridiculous concepts like animal-human hybrids. On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. And they happened to settle with Tumblr as their main hangout. While these Other Kin were mostly harmless, it quickly became just another absurd ideology that got linked to Tumblr once a video on the subject went viral. It was all of these controversies and just insane posts on Tumblr that were starting to wreck the website's reputation, because by now, Tumblr's reputation was essentially in the gutter, which caused many regular users to outright leave and further ruined the appeal of the site to new users. Because as Tumblr became associated with one-sided politics and crazy fandoms, this would become people's first impression of the site. This was no longer a site about art and expression, and the sheer amount of anti-Tumblr content on the internet probably didn't help them much either, and as more and more people who liked the site for its creativity and expression were now leaving the site, those who stayed were mostly the hardcore Tumblr users who were the ones negatively impacting the site in the first place. These politically extremist communities and crazed fandoms stayed as the more normal people began leaving. And this isn't to say that the website's vocal minority became the majority, but their effect on the platform was more and more noticeable as the site's population continued dropping. This, combined with the standard issues that came with echo chambers, meant that Tumblr's user base would only become more and more radical, yet another factor working against the site. It was clear that Tumblr was rotting to the core, which brings us perfectly to late 2016, when Yahoo announced that Tumblr had lost around half of its previous $1 billion value. Even worse, Tumblr's last remaining founder, who was still involved with the company, had just quit. And further up the corporate ladder, the owners of Tumblr, Yahoo, weren't doing all too well either, eventually being bought out by Verizon the next year. This acquisitional chaos and the departure of Tumblr's founder left the website without a vision. Additionally, the financial problems at Tumblr were further exacerbated by even more users leaving the site, with their user base graph looking like this. And then at the beginning of 2016, new posts on Tumblr had already fallen to only 60 million per day, around half of what they were just three years earlier. During the span of the next year, Tumblr's daily posts would again half to just 30 million a day. The platform wasn't just declining, it was in freefall. The many compounding issues with Tumblr's community had done a number on the website. As the website was now owned by Verizon, they had to do something fast to stem the bleeding. If they couldn't sort this problem out soon enough, Tumblr would be dead in the water. And so Tumblr turned to a last resort. To gain money to reinvest back into Tumblr, the company resorted to a final decision. They would tackle the issues that advertisers had with advertising on Tumblr. You see, even from the start, Tumblr's always had trouble making money relative to other social media sites. Compared to other platforms like Google, where users enter specifically what they want to see in the search bar, or Facebook, where profiles hold valuable data about the individual, Tumblr had it rough. Similar to Reddit and 4chan, Tumblr users are considered very low value in the eyes of advertisers, all due to the limited personal information and actionable data held inside their accounts. This caused Tumblr to have problems generating any revenue, since the platform's niche and spread out communities were hard for agencies to really pinpoint advertisements towards. And by 2018, Tumblr wasn't only losing its popularity, 
but it was steadily losing all of its money. And so in an attempt to fix this, the company tried shifting their website to become more advertiser friendly. And as a result of this mindset, Tumblr made the short-sighted decision in December 2018 to remove and permanently ban all sexual content that was being posted on the website. And without a doubt, banning explicit material on the platform was the final nail in Tumblr's coffin. You see, while art was the main reason people used the site, whether the company liked to admit it or not, adult content was also a very significant portion of why people used Tumblr, both in terms of the artists as well as the viewers. And so by banning explicit material, Tumblr blacklisted a substantial chunk of their audience who used the platform exclusively for this reason, essentially knocking down one of the only pillars left that was keeping the website alive. And so once Tumblr went through with this ban, a huge portion of the website's audience was completely lost with no idea where to go. However, it was clear that staying on Tumblr was not an option anymore. The only thing left on Tumblr was SJW rants and exclusive echo chamber communities. This sparked what many refer to as the Tumblr exodus, where countless users migrated from Tumblr to different sites. For artists drawing explicit content, they really only had two options, Reddit or Twitter. In fact, it was these sites where the majority of ex-Tumblr users gathered, not only for their better design and more open communities, but these sites were growing in user base. They were thriving environments for viewers and online creators. Since both of them had some aspects of community interaction available, while still also allowing adult material on the sites. This led to a constant stream of Tumblr artists moving to these other platforms, and the people who viewed their art would then follow in turn, all while leaving their Tumblr accounts inactive collecting dust. After this decision, Tumblr started experiencing an unprecedented drop in growth, both in their user base as well as the company's revenue. For a long time, the website had been in a vicious cycle of losing users, which then only made other users feel that the site was dying, causing them to leave as well. And banning explicit material only compounded this effect, and the decision ended up driving Tumblr even quicker into the grave, resulting in Tumblr now being worth only $3 million. And just to put into perspective, yes, a company once valued at $1 billion is now only worth a mere $3 million at best, making it clear to everyone that Tumblr is now officially dead.